Man down, man down. Oh. That's not your mic. We have Hello? This is your mic. You get to wander. Try not to choke anybody. Wow. I think if I jump, I could break a leg. It's not, you know, maybe I won't. We were, uh, how's everybody today? Jordan, how we doing, buddy? Come on in, Jordan, the water's fine. Those loud people from Oregon, they're unbelievable. I love you all. Where's my scheming distributor, Charlie? Are you here? There he is. There's Charlie the schemer. I love him. He's always coming up with new ideas to sell pinball machines. I got to love him. Shout out to the guys in the booth, Mike Lorraine. Mike, what the, what the, what's his name again, that guy? Chris. That's right, Chris. What's up, Chris? He's doing? I met Mike's parents over there. They're here. His mom's from New Jersey. If you, if you don't watch it, she's going gonna, gonna to whack you. She's going to put a hit out on you. And how about it for the great artist, John Yowsey? And that guy... Mike, behave. Your mother is watching. John, you know, John is amazing. I, uh, I've always been a fan of his artwork. I never dreamed that I would start a pinball company. I'm still trying to figure that out. And to have John do artwork for a game um, that we are now shipping is just amazing. It's just a blessing, really. i uh, just very lucky, really cool. So what the hell am I doing on there? What do I want to... Can we, get, can we get a lot of screens like that? More than one, two? No, that's too weird. My nose, is, with a mirror. my nose is really big when I look that way. All right, what are we doing today? Hey, let's play... Uh, Got a video here. Yeah, let's play the video first. Let's get everybody in the mood. Are we on the right screen? Why are you, why are you behind the screen? So today I have Butch Peel with me, the uh, electrical engineer and the guy that writes all the game manuals, um, Hobbit, Wizard of Oz, and soon to be dialed in. That'll be ready in about six years. Not, not too soon. And then David Thiel, the man behind the curtain here, the sound, sound master, Dave Thiel. Now, Todd McCullough is back there, and Todd is the same height that I am right now. So I could actually see eye to eye with Todd right now. What's up, buddy? How are you? I heard you've been beating up that game at the Seattle Pinball Museum. All right, that's good. I love it. This is the first time I actually got to see Todd. I, nice. 
Look him right in the belt buckle I know. usually, right? <laughs> usually I, pu I could punch him right in the knee if I have a problem with him. All right, do something here. Are we ready, Mike? Martin, how are you, Martin? Good? Where's, where's your, your lady? She's coming. All right, good. Okay. Fashionably late. Here we go. From the mind of legendary designer Pat Lawler comes an original Jersey Jack production. Are you dialed in? Experience lightning fast pinball action like never before. On a play field design jam packed with innovation. Witness the destruction of Quantum City on an interactive high definition back blast display. And dial in to the machine's secret weapon with your very own smartphone. Look at the size of that hole in the street. The reviews are in. And Jersey Jack is destroying the competition. Nice. I like that. I, I like that. How many people got to actually play Dialed In so far? Okay, so almost everybody. Uh, collectively, what do, what do you guys think? Good? Thumbs up? Good? We got to go back and redo it for another year? Or what? No, we've done that already. This game we're not redoing. This game was really, uh, it was simmering on the stove and it, w it, it was finished. So the cool thing, where's my video? Where's my, uh, is, that, is that our pictures? Is that what's going on? Okay. Here's a picture. Where is that, where is that hank of hair, Joe Abad? Is he around? He's not here. He's, he's still ball crawling, I think. All right. Is that up on the screen? Yeah, that's an unretouched photo. He okay. really looks like that. So, you know, I've been on the show circuit, and Butch has been on the show circuit with me. You know, Dave Thiel, he's been running around to some... You can sit down. He's been doing some shows, too. And um, this weekend, everybody knows there's, you know, three big shows. There's a show in Atlanta. Uh, there's a show in Colorado. And there's a show here. And all of us somehow lucked out, and we're here with you guys. And uh, I'm thankful to be here. We're really lucky to be here. There's Joe. Joe, there's a picture of you, dude. dude. Look at that. You came right in. Anybody want Joe's autograph? He's available afterwards. Five bucks each. He's trying to pay off uh, a couple of games. Needs a haircut. He's buying six Star Wars games. So he's trying to pay them off. So, <laughs> listen, it's all good. By the way, we should probably have a moment of silence for uh, one of my childhood you know, heroes, really. Adam West passed away. But, Very sad. Person. But that's not our game either, but I do love Batman, so what could I say? So anyhow, we've been running around to all these shows, and uh, really, pinball has come a long way, that you could have three major shows on one weekend. It's very cool. And, uh, you know, people fighting about what show you go to, so uh, I'm really happy about that. Next, next show for us is probably Pintastic, right? In uh, New England? Yeah, that you're sounds about right. After the you're going to be July. there, John Yowsey. You're going to be in Pintastic in New England this year? No, you're not driving up there from Tennessee, right? Had enough of that last year. Okay. So, um, yeah, so let's, let's do a couple pictures here. Let's tell you a little bit about what's going on. So this was over in uh, Pinagogo, and that's our good friend Sam and his wife from IGN. IGN loves games. IGN's all about games. We did an unboxing with them with uh, Dialed In, and it was really cool. And that, that's a really great show. That show moves to a bigger venue this year, right? Next year. Next this year's year over State, with. Yeah. Yep. What else you got, Butch? So um, in the building, we get to see a lot of really cool things happening. Um, that's all the new cabinet artwork that, that John was talking about before, the back box artwork that included the flying saucer. I think I was one of the people that... Uh, Asked that to change around a little bit. I wanted to have John, you know, did so much, and I felt that there wasn't enough of it seen on the cabinet. So I just wanted to change up the back box a little bit. And last October, I got a good chance. People are texting me right now, Charlie Martin, you are going to Freudian slip. <laughs> Who's Pete Lawson? Who's that? 
Indeed. I don't know. Uh, just, just tweet and text up the stupid things you want me to say, and I'll just, I'll just oblige all of you, okay? So, uh, <laughs> keep going, Butch. So anyway, we, we, I kind of tricked everybody and said, we're going to change the name of the game, which we really weren't going to change the name of the game. You know, the first time I saw Donkey Kong, I said, gee, what a stupid name. But it was a great game. And I saw Pac-Man, and I said, what is that? And the name really didn't matter. You know, we, we have an unlicensed game, and I think whatever we called the game, somebody would have said, gee, that's a silly name. So, you know, if you're coming out with a license and you know it's called you know, Hobbit or Wizard of Oz, you know what it's going to be, so. Um, what's really cool in the factory is just walking around and seeing all these thousands of parts come in the door and get QC'd and then go into bins to get built. And, and it's gone from a lot of Wicked Witches to a lot of Smaug things to this QED dude guy, you know, hanging around. So it's kind of cool to see that happening. This is the final test line in the building. Maybe that was a couple days ago. Thursday was a really great day. Um, we got to ship games out. So, you know, um, I'm expected to do a cartwheel. I'll probably do one later right off the stage. And if a bunch of you want me to go crowd surfing, you know, I could, I could do something like that. But it's really a lot of fun to see another game ship out and uh, people get games. So that's very cool. It's sad, on the other hand, to watch you do a cartwheel. I, I don't want to do it the right way. You know, Jen was in gymnastics. My daughter was in gymnastics for a long time when she was a kid, and she wants to teach me the right way to do a cartwheel. And Nobody it would be no fun to. if I could do it the right way. Yeah, Just yeah. wondering, you know, make sure I don't break my neck. Um, so, you know, you get to see the assembly line, and a lot of people still visit us. And uh, so now Dialed In is on the main line. We have a smaller line right now that's set up to do Hobbit. We're not building Hobbit right now. We have back orders of about 100 games right now. And we have parts to build, maybe another three or 400 Hobbits. And I, we still have the license, so probably late summer or early fall, we'll build Black Arrow Hobbit games in time for the holidays. And uh, we're still working to finish the code on that game. Keith wrote something on a news group uh, yesterday, I think, about our plans for Hobbit code and, and beyond. So. Uh, Everybody knows kind of like what we're doing. We don't, we don't take all this time and energy on a game and leave it half-baked. Um, with, with Dialed In, the game that's inside is running 113, Butch? Yeah. So 113, that's production code. The game is finished. That game is code complete. It's a complete game. There may be you know, some software fixes or bugs or things like that. You know, maybe in the future there might be, might be things added, but the game is a complete game. You know, when I came up here years ago, I guess 2012, right, when the show was in Seattle proper, I brought up uh, literally a box of lights uh, with Wizard of Oz. And everybody was like, wow, look at that thing. You know, it's amazing. And it took us about 80 different code updates to get it to be where it is now. And I promised that Pinball Expo in October that we would ship dialed in in the second quarter, which it still is, and that it would be code complete. So it's nice to keep more promises than break promises. But we're and coming I'm really up with new terms too, right? Huh? We're coming up with new terms too. Code complete is kind of a faux pas anymore. It's, it's rules complete. or It's a game. Complete. It's a real game. It does everything it should do. It, it, it right. has amazing modes. But not to say that, that we won't add Dave, stuff later. Dave Thiel wasn't told to talk about the modes and how to get there and the secret stuff. And all of that, he was going to spill his guts, but, you know, he was told not to do that. So uh, he's not going to do that, right? We, we don't want Dave to sleep with the fishes, no. He, yeah. he, he learned a new phrase. It was what? On advice of counsel, I respectfully decline to answer the question on the grounds that my answer may tend to incriminate me, right? All right. So he learned that last night at dinner. Go ahead, Butch. Let's try another one. This is at, what, where was that? Oh, this is here. So this was happening last night. There are lines on dialed in. There are people having a lot of fun with it. You see the camera. Um, I think one game, a game that Charlie had, both of those games are prototype games. And you can download the Jersey Jack Pinball app. And I think there's only one game in there that you could connect to because somehow somebody like took the, the Wi-Fi USB dongle out of it. 
So one of them can't communicate, and I, I can't bring extra parts with me for a whole game, so I don't have one of those dongles. When so. you lose something the size of your pinky nail, it's kind of hard to find. Yeah, really. So this is the first real game on location. Charlie, you can take a picture of the monitor and tell this maniac, Alan C. Hack in New York, that we gave him some credit. He came and picked up the first dialed in yesterday, and he put it on a street location. And I think this is at a place called Pioneers. And um, it's, it's working, and people love it, and it's making money. And Alan, Alan ordered like five games. So uh, he's been calling Jen every 15 minutes to try to find out when he can get his, his other four games. So it's a good problem to have. Um, so you know, when you, when you get an opportunity to see Wizard of Oz dialed in and Hobbit all together, it's kind of cool for me, not that I feel like the father of them, but they look like brothers and sisters and they're all very different than each other, but you could tell they're in the same family. And um, it would be real nice to see locations pretty soon with all three games, so we're really looking forward to that too. Uh, that's, that's, who's that, Charlie? Who's the guy in the middle? Pat Lawler, right? He worked at Williams, that's right. He worked at Bally, that's right. He, he's at JJP. We're proud to have him. And that's my son, Jack. That's the other Jersey Jack. Um, you know, Jack's kind of been in the industry all his life as a kid, and he runs the final test line. So if you get a game and it doesn't work, you know, I'll give you his home phone number, and you can uh, get we, in touch with him. We, we call him Little Jack, even though he's bigger than He's bigger big than Jack. me. We call him Young Jack. So, yeah, that was uh, pretty cool. This guy is uh, this guy, Charlie Martin. He came, he came to Lakewood, New Jersey. He squatted at my desk, and uh, he wouldn't get up. So uh, that was on a recent visit, right? Charlie? Give me somebody. Get me somebody, anybody. Right. <laughs> Give me the next one. There's his lovely wife, Cindy. And uh, they were lost all over Manhattan and Westchester and Asbury Park and everywhere they went. Has anybody here been to the factory? Come out to Lakewood, New Jersey? Martin, I know you, Charlie, yeah. Anybody? Well, you're all invited. Anytime you want to come out, anytime you're in New Jersey, New York metropolitan area, come on out to the factory, give Jen an email or call me or whatever. Uh, the door is always open for everybody. Uh, we let everybody in. Uh, literally and figuratively. There's a lot of people interested in learning about pinball. They don't know that there are still companies building pinball. Um, we just had a news article about us last week. The Asbury Park Press did a story about us. Um, I even let that guy... Does anybody know who this guy Canada is? Does anybody know who that guy is? Yeah. So he pestered me for about nine months to come to the factory to do an interview. So. If you haven't heard it, um, I did an interview with him, and uh, I hear it's pretty good. I can't listen to it again because I can only hear myself talk once. I can't take my voice for the second time. So they, t they told me it was good. So he, he tried getting me to say controversial things, imagine. So I don't think I said shocking. any of those things. You know, shocking. Yeah. That's Charlie's booth inside, so if you didn't visit that, yes, Charlie's giving away all kinds of gifts at his booth. Go in there and get all kinds of free stuff. Yeah, whatever it is. Next. So this was a picture that we took when we uh, had a party at the factory a couple weeks ago, and we started shipping games, which is a great thing to happen. And... Um, here comes Sabrina and Bill. Come on in, Bill. There must be a seat for you somewhere. Come on, Bill. Did you, you bring that rocker candy late. or whatever? What would you, what'd you bring with you from Vancouver? Anybody, when you're visiting Vancouver, go to the Kingfisher Resorts. It's all newly remodeled, rebuilt. <laughs> Bill just cleared out 14 <laughs> acres of property. He, he's building a helicopter pad for me to get there. Bill's giving away free things. We love there. him. Yeah. He's giving away free stuff so you can see him. <laughs> Next one. You know, we were at the Grand Canyon a couple weeks ago, and my wife, she walked like this close to the edge of the Grand Canyon, and the park ranger was telling her to step back. And I have a fear of heights, so like, I was like back over here. And then we went 
Did anybody go to Skywalk out in, um, where is that, in uh, Arizona? This big Skywalk? You're out 4,000 feet over the Grand Canyon, and you walk on this thing, and it's all glass, and you have to put booties on. And I, I, I didn't want to, so this edge kind of looks to me like, but it's probably not going to take me 12 seconds to hit that, you know, probably take me split second, and, you know. So I can't come too close. Anyway, shipping these games, uh, getting out of the building, it's a very cool thing. And I think I paid back Frolic because I had to wear his t-shirt, so he wore my t-shirt up at his arcade in Canada, and he's getting it dialed in. Just another shot, final test line, game's going out. I think that's all I put together here. That what do you got next? That's it. An Eskimo... Uh, Thank so we're going to, before we go to Butch and we, and we go to David, anybody have any questions? You know, is anybody still awake? Yeah. The, guy, the guy's from Oregon back there. This guy took no dose, I think. He was telling me he was going to take no dose so he would fall asleep. Yes. What's the prospect of coming out with an update kit for WAS lighting systems for 2.0? Prospect is good. The, you know, we have all the parts. Butch has to work on some kind of documentation. We were talking about it yesterday. There was a repair clinic here for somebody that had a WAS that had issues. And, you know, it's a, not a good thing, but we want to support everything we sold. We're working on it for sure. And if you send me an email to Jack at Jersey Jack Pinball, get on my radar so I know that you need that. We'll, when we start doing this, you'll be the first on the list. Okay, good, good. I'm happy to hear that. Good. Where do you live? Where's that? Oh, well, it's too far away for me to come over. So. All right, there you go. I got another offer. You know, I had a nice room at the Murano this weekend. They they put me up at the Murano. It's beautiful. And this guy Charlie convinced me not to go there, and I slept on his couch last night. So uh, the things I do for pinball, right? But it was a lot of fun. Crazy. Anybody else have a question? Yes. Is what? Pat is working on his next game. And what is it? And all of that, I'll tell you what that is a little later. Yes. Bill. <laughs> all right, troublemaker. So I don't even hear what you said. All right. So without further ado, we'll go to more questions later. All right. You guys... You guys are, you know, usually we do this later when all you people are sundowning around 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and you're all wiped out, but you still have a lot of piss and vinegar in you right now. You know, so I don't know. Maybe, maybe the later guys will get you. When Steve Ritchie's up here, you know, you guys will be out, out cold. All right. So uh, here's Try to Veal. I'm here all week. Here's David Thiel, Soundmaster. Give it the damn mic. Thank you, Jack. Oh, no, sit down. All right. So let's see if the first slide works. This is a sound test. PowerPoint is not responding. Yes! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, due to technical difficulties, Oh, I'm crushed. Microsoft wins again. Well, it's only fair, because I worked at Microsoft for seven years. This is just the revenge. <laughs> Don't make me say it again. I said nasty things about Office. <laughs> oh, s what? What do you want from me? I need both hands. Hold on. Okay, what's that? Oh, mouse is gone. Everything is gone, for Christ's sake. Uh, you want to do yours? Filler. <laughs> I, I could do a soft shoe routine, yeah. I'm serious. I'm going to have to reboot this son of a bitch. This is ridiculous. Wow. Dead, dead, I'm sorry, dead. for those of you who didn't hear, I said I'm going to have to reboot this sum of bitch. Okay, hold on. Okay. 
So in the meantime, give me, give me, hey, where's my slack, Jack? Oh, now you both have done it again. Good job. Stop no, it. stop, stop. I, I told you don't give that back to him. I, I you know, you. John, you talked about Sister Eustacia. And uh, I didn't go to Catholic school, but I had a lot of friends that got the crap beat out of them from rulers. They still, you, you, need, you need some therapy, I think. No, you need to quit helping. Thank God you're not the electrical engineer in the company. I, I could have tied knots if Routing that's what we were going to do. Wow. Anybody have any questions? Does anybody even know why the hell we're here? Yeah. Hang on. It's going to drag Dave off the stage here in just a second. You watch. <laughs> hey, it's only pinball. Yes. Your name and what do you do? Uh, my name is... I, I don't really care. What's the question? <laughs> You, you mentioned the code complete thing and games shipping more complete. Does that mean that we are going to get new features or is it really, really done? New features on what? What are we talking about? Which game? It's done. The game's done. Everybody asks. But how when long am I, after you know, we finish with it? When you got married, people said, like, yeah. when are you going to have a kid? And you had a kid and they said, when are you going to have another kid? And, they, and you, then nothing was going on. When are you going to get divorced? Everybody just wonders what the hell the next thing is. It's... It's done. It's a game. It's finished. You know, I, I got to say, damn it, it's done. Get it out of the building. Oh, that's somebody else that says that, actually. I got Are it. Are you done? I All got right, it. good. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it turns out that if you take the HDMI away from the computer once PowerPoint is running and then plug it back in, at least on this Acer, it crowbars. Who knew? I know. Okay. So let me do this again. Is that rewarding? Does that, that make your nachos tingle? Good. Because that's the sound you get after you've entered your last initial on high score, and then it puts up your big score. See? Hold on. See, that's how that works. So, 12 months ago, I was here in this same position, and we were trying to find something to say about The Hobbit, because, well, 12 months before, we had said something about The Hobbit. And I was hoping to God that we would come here 12 months later and not say a single thing about The Hobbit. And I'm not. In the 12 months, though, I've changed the way I do business just a little bit to the good. And dialed in has the benefit of this. So those are the 18 concrete steps down to my studio. And that sound, that's dialed in tilt danger. So one more time and you're done, buddy. And for that reason, games don't come to my studio and haven't for 10 years since I've been doing this. Um, and that's not an ideal thing. I keep them up in my unheated garage. So I do the work in my studio and then somehow I get the results up to the game and I listen to it and I go back and forth. It's not an ideal situation. When we did Dialed In, Pat uh, redesigned, involved me in redesigning the back box, and we redid the sound system. And it's cooler, it's better, it's niftier, it's got more bass, it's got more highs, it's more stereo separation, it, it's better. So I wanted to honor that effort, and I also, it, it's not perfect. No pinball audio reproduction system is. So I wanted to have it down in my studio so I could design directly to its strengths and dance around its weaknesses. So, uh, who knows who one of those guys is? Come on. 
Not you. Byron, thank you, Byron Rance. So you know that voice that comes out of the ceiling in the room over there for the last 10 years? That's Byron. You know him by his voice. And the other guy is a friend of mine from Microsoft, a guy named David Kurlander. And these two heroes helped me get dialed in down into my studio, which is the first game that's ever been down there. Uh, it was sort of a controlled fall. Jack makes them heavy. So it's fabulous. And the result is not only do I work faster, but I work better. And I can, when I, I, I actually set it up so that when I'm working on my, my uh, keyboard and on my computer, that output goes directly into the pin. And so I listen to my work. So when it sounds good coming out of the pin, I'm done. Uh, achieving that without doing closing that loop directly is much harder to do. So I just wanted to say thank you so much. Hello, I'm calling from Dialed In Electronics. We have detected a problem with your phone. So everybody wants to know about the call-outs, so let's get that out of the way. There are 627 of them, which is a boatload. And you think, oh gosh, the Hobbit at 1,200. But at least 400 of those aren't even being called yet, so okay, fine. Uh, 627, you think the game lasts for 180 seconds and how often do you want to hear a call out and then you divide that number into 627, you'll go a while before you hear repeats. So it's cool and there are 16 different characters. Mandy, who knows who Mandy is? Not you. Mandy is, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Actually, I'll take credit for Mandy just a tiny bit because in October, Mandy wasn't in the game yet and I went to Expo and flipped the game for the first time and then I pitched this to Ted. I said, you know, okay, you got a cell phone and it's powered by quantum computing. It's way more powerful than your average cell phone. So you would think it would have a really interesting character to talk to you. And I pitched Sadie because I kind of thought she would have a whole lot more personality, kind of like a Jewish mom. Hi, how you doing? You know, and it didn't, that didn't work, but at least the notion of a character in the cell phone did stick. Um, and... Shoot the theater. Nice shot. Now, oh, I put it up, didn't I? Okay. So, tidbit, there are a lot of homages to everything Pat has ever done in Dialed In. And the character of Mandy is read, is performed by the woman who was Candy 2000 in Safecracker. Somehow they found her and got her and there you go. Shoot the theater. We did that. Okay, we have a newscaster representing JJP8 some you know and he's this newscast brought to you by Crazy Bob's phone store crazy phones crazy prices crazy deals yeah and there are you know people I see these questions just like how many disasters are in the game and I'm sure I'll get grief from Bensonville for even telling you there are 11 okay you heard it here first. There are 11 disasters in the game, but I won't tell you which ones they are because we want you to discover those. Okay, here are, uh, and, and one of the things characterizing the disasters, the introductions to the disasters, the phone rings, and for some reason some video guy comes and talks to you. Here comes another big one. There's a whole lot of shaking going on. That's the end of this shift. <laughs> We'll just pave right over that. Them little spaceships is shooting every which way. No need to rush. You got more time. There you go. And let's see. Three from eight. There's a, uh, three from 11. There's eight more of those. And there's a lot of actual, there's actually like 20 or so of those synced up talking head things. A lot of work. And so if you like the call out package, pretty much this is all uh, Ted Estes. He took control of the whole call-out package and got it done. Got her done. 
Ah, sound effects and fanfares. Um, Jack alluded to, I, I had a couple of these, and uh, there's one I'm not going to play for you. So, there's a little target that you can't see when you normally play the game. You have to kind of hit it ideally from the upper flipper. It's up in the, it's a little stand-up target, and that's the big bang target. And when you qualify the big bang target, here's a tip for high scoring, kids. If you're in a mode and you have qualified the big bang target, shoot it then, because that will finish the mode successfully. If you had four or five shots to make, done. You get the whole damn thing. So, ah, PowerPoint, you suck. Ah, that's a good thing. That's one of the bigger ones. And, and that one took like about three passes because a lot of these things I do to JP's video. I get these video animations of stuff happening that are wonderfully rewarding. But this one, the programmer, had also built these big-ass light shows that go with the stuff on the screen. So my stuff is sort of coordinated with the video, but I hadn't taken into account his BA light shows. So can I do it again? One more time. Yeah. So you get that synergy, you know, you couple the sounds with the light shows, with the video, and maybe you jiggle the shaker motor a little bit, and you just have a little tiny, minor orgasm right in the middle of your event, <laughs> which is all we were trying to do. Okay, uh, quantum effect music, right? John, in the previous seminar, alluded to the fact that this is a, an original license, and I've done a couple. Actually, my very first pinball was uh, Laser War, and that was basically an original one. And uh, so I'm familiar with the notion, but it's a challenge because it's, it depends on how well the metaphor is designed and written, how fleshed out it is, because you don't have a movie or a TV show to work from. So you have the notion of, you know, a programmer and a playfield designer and some other guys who wandered in off the street who say, let's do this. So, you know, the music, this is the most terrifying thing for any artist. A blank piece of paper or a blank canvas. You know, what the heck am I going to do? Now, if this was a longer seminar, because I've got to get off because we want to hear Butch, I would tell you the torturous path to getting to what I end eventually did. Om. Actually, I've stopped calling the music that you first hear main play. Because main play sort of has the notion of one tune. Main place is what you hear. Ohm stands for out of mode. And in modern pinball games, that means when you're not in a mode. You're not in a mode, or you're not in multi-ball, you're just playing, right? But in modern pinball games, Ohm has stages. Like, you just start, and you're in ohm regular. Uh, when you go further on and you've qualified locking a ball, well, that's another ohm. And then when you've locked a ball, that's an ohm for multi-ball ready. So, oh, 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 and this one, this one you can sing along to. Uh, I frequently use this as a, as a compositional thing where I, I write a lyric that makes sense and then I write a tune. Right? Now, you never hear the lyric. You never know the, what the lyric is. Nobody ever sings this. But it does make the tune more memorable. So we'll, I'll show it to you once, and you're going to see it. And then we're going to do it one more time, and we'll see if like one person will sing along, OK? Okay, now that's really simple. Now, 
Singing is just talking with notes. So first, let's say all together now, I've got a new phone. It's better than yours. I've got a new phone. I don't know how to use it. <laughs> See, you know, I hate that phone. I hate that phone in that game. God damn, where's there a phone in that game? Oh, man. Okay, so my notion was, you know, this poor guy who is the player gets this phone, right? And you're so proud. You made a good deal at Crazy Bob's. You got the phone. It's cool. And so in my mind, when I wrote this tune, I had two images. One was John Travolta in Saturday Night Fever doing that walk. I've got a new phone. The second image is I replaced John Travolta with Jack. So now, everybody have that image? Okay, now we're gonna sing this. Ready? Two, three, four. I've got a new phone. It's better than yours. I've got a new phone. I don't know how to use it. I've got a new phone. Okay. You're right. Somebody did sing along. Somebody did sing along. Just one. That's all I need. I'm easy. Okay. After you get that, that's how you start the game. And that hopefully puts you in the mood. Because, you know, we're not licensing off Star Wars or some big metaphor you've invested hours and hours and hours in. So I got about 30 seconds to grab you by the nachos and... Hearts and minds get into the mood. And hopefully that song does it. So, we've locked a ball, we're ready to lock a ball. All you have to do to do that, for those of you unfamiliar with the game, is play a mode. You don't have to win the mode, you just have to hit the QED guy. And John didn't know, but that's Quantum Electric Dude. QED, you hit him. For one time, initially, that charges your phone, because your phone has to be charged. God, I hate phones. Oh, God. So you charge your phone, and you play a mode. You put the ball in the easiest target to hit on the whole play field. You play a mode. doesn't matter whether you win or lose. Now you can lock a ball over on the left side. And after you've played that mode, the music, every time now, until you drain or lock a ball, will be this. A little more intense, still upbeat, you know, it's, we're progressing in a positive direction. No, no, don't do that. Okay, after you lock a ball, now, now's the cool part, and we could sing again, but I'm not going to put you through that, but I will show you the lyrics. Okay, you'll never be able to play dialed in quite the same way again, which was my whole goal here. Okay, I'm almost done, but I'm going to talk about the Crazy Bob modes. Now, in Pat Lawler's work, Crazy Bob shows up, or a Bob character shows up quite a lot, I'm told. And uh, so we have a, a stand-up bank of three stand-up targets, and... You have to hit all three of them, or maybe they spot you a couple first. But in any case, you hit these guys over here, and then you enable a crazy bob mode. Now, three of them are too quick, two multi-balls, and three of them are activities. And the first one, oh, is emoji overload. And the deal here is that both screens, the back glass and the phone, start filling up with emojis. So you can't see what the hell you're doing. It's incredibly obnoxious. Even Mandy doesn't like the emojis. And so your job is to like hit ramps that moves them around. If you go into the pops, that pops them and they go away. And the more you hit, 
the more points you get. And this is a modifier. This can happen on top of multiball. This can happen, you can stack this thing. And I was requested about halfway through the project. I had followed Pat's direction. I'd done a whole lot of sci-fi heavy music for the modes. And then I started getting requests. We want the game to be more 80s, goofier. So all the Crazy Bob modes are just a little bit goofy. I told you. Okay, this is a two ball, two ball quick multi ball. We have Betty at the back, and she's got this wrench, and she's a diverter. When she comes down, she diverts the ball into the pops, a little plate on top of the pops. And the goal of this multi ball is to time your left ramp shot so that it makes it around while her diverter is up. That's a jackpot. See, now you know. Yeah. Hear that metal? In my version, Betsy's kind of a bitch, actually. <laughs> Sorry. Are there children? There are. You'll run into that. Uh, okay. Here's another stackable activity called Lottery Frenzy. And this involves the camera, assuming that you aren't so paranoid or photo-unogenic that you have turned it off in the, uh, in the adjustments. If the camera is on, when you start this mode, the game encourages you to like grab a ball and get control of it so you can free up a hand and wave it at the camera. That is the equivalent of scratching off your lottery ticket, exposing the points underneath. Then, for the remainder of the timed mode, you shoot the theater, that gives you more lottery tickets. Okay, sound like fun? And, and actually, technically, that's lottery. You can sing that one too, but I just wasn't going to belabor the point. Not in that voice. No, that was, that was, that's, what's her name? Julia Child. Julia Child, yeah, that's the Julia Child rendition of. Okay, this is another quick two ball multi ball. And if you have played Dialed In, from time to time, the quantum electric dude is mildly annoying because he will get in the way of the things you want to do. You have to hit him and then he'll move out of the way and then you can hit the shot you were going to hit. If you get into this mode, your business is to hit him. He continually moves back and forth. Every time you hit him is a jackpot. And when you do that 15 times, you light the SIM card or you get a SIM card. I'm not sure. SIM cards are important, but I won't tell you why. I was simulating the quantum electric dude. Okay, sorry. I just did that spontaneously. It wasn't planned. I don't have any notes on my PowerPoint that says do that. I, not as surprised as I was. Okay, uh, two more. Selfie mode. Uh, do I have to explain selfie mode? Who has not seen selfie mode? For this guy right here, there is a camera in the game and when you go into this crazy Bob mode, you get this wacky music, which has lyrics, by the way, and every time you hit a shot, closes the switch, it takes a picture of you, and it puts it up on the back glass. Why not?
Okay? I want all these earworms to be like firmly implanted so that you absolutely have to buy this game because you can't help yourself. Okay. And finally, Drones Gone Wild. There's an obvious play on words there. You hit the drone cluster over here. That gets you a jackpot, but it also puts up in the, Einz, uh, in the I'm sorry, the quantum theater, it puts up a thing which was some kind of artifact from one of uh, Mr. Loss, I'm sorry, Pat Lawler's games. And uh, you hit that for super jackpots, I think. And there's a bunch of them. I think it's like a dozen of those things. And you can imagine, but it's really cool. I mean, all the stuff involved in the theater is very cool. I have nothing for this, but I'll just mumble on about this for a second. One of the cool things uh, is kind of like Pinball 2000, finally done right. Sorry, is anybody here? Uh, you know, because it doesn't involve like the whole play field. It just has this like virtual display thing that you can see through, but then you can put things there and the ball can go through it and it looks like it hits them. So this was used very cleverly by the team. In Dialed In, there are no spinners. In Dialed In, there are no drop targets. In Dialed In, there are no Newton ball bang targets. And in Dialed In, there's one other thing that normally you would find on a pinball machine. Except by doing the lanes, doing the ramps and coming down through the lanes enough times, you enable virtual inline drop targets at the theater. Uh, there's another mode where you can enable a spinner in the theater. There's another mode where there's a, oh, it's a drone thing, so it has a Newton ball that you hit and then you, a drone goes crazy. And then the fourth one is a bang target where it's, it's the train, right? And the train comes up, exposes a train door, and that's the bash target. And you bang on that until it deforms, exposing your points. So virtually it has a spinner and in-lane drop targets. And, and very cool. I thought that was a great use of the technology. In any case, drones gone wild. Everybody clap along. Oh, sorry. I'm all done. Thanks. All right, here's Butch. You got three minutes. I got three minutes before Mike starts waving at me back there. I'll run through these real quick. Um, as I, uh, I've been working for Jack since 2012. I have a real job where I work for the U.S. Army Research Lab at White Sands Missile Range. So I've been civil servant for 32 plus years. I'm getting ready to retire this fall so I can spend more time with pinball. So I'm, I'm super excited about that. And it made me kind of reflect a little bit on my, on my pinball uh, background. I just thought I'd share a, a few slides real quick with you. Um, I started thinking about it and, you know, pinball, when I was a kid, was my interest. I, I liked to play with the, the bowling alleys and stuff. They had a coin door on one of the games, a firepower or a kiss pinball, I forget which one it was, where the, the credit switch was a little too tight so you could bang on the door and get some credit. So we used to play a, you know, our $10 roll of quarters lasted a little bit longer because of that when no one was looking, but, uh, you know, it was a real fun thing to do, and I, I, I kind of, I did it a lot when I was younger, and then kind of lost track of it for a while. Later on, I, I rediscovered pinball as I was in college. It became my hobby, and I got really interested in it, and a lot of, a lot of fun things going on, uh, buying my first game, and all that kind of stuff, and then I realized that, you know, this is more than just something I enjoy. I have a real passion for this thing. So it came, I, that passion kind of showed to Jack, I guess, and it became my job, became a side job for me, in addition, you know, part-time type position. And now, hey, yeah, what the heck, I'm just going to, pinball's my life. I, I really love, everything else is just details, you know. So um, I, I enjoy this stuff. There's, my wife, my wife wishes I had passion for, you know, fixing 
washing machines and things like that, like I do a pinball machine or cars. It, it just doesn't interest me. I, I don't know why, but it, it's there. The fire burns for pinball, and, and I'm not going to deny it anymore. So, um, My first pinball machine when I started way back then was a, a Williams Contact. Uh, the guy came and set it up for me. Um, $250 and he was out the door and I had a pinball machine and I was scared to death of it. I was in college at the time learning electrical engineering but still you know I didn't want to lift that play field. I didn't want to take that glass off, open that coin door. It was scary stuff inside there. As I you know went to, to school and continued my classes the latest greatest thing was a pin bot they had in the, in the school um, student union. I'd be studying and I'd hear that pin bot circuits activated, you know, ba 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 you know, it was so exciting and I used to sit there thinking, man, if I could ever have a pinball machine like that in my house, that would be just the, the living end. So, fast forward a few years, and get from, from where you, you start picking up a few things that maybe aren't set up in your house for you, you get some projects. I got a, a high speed pinball machine. My wife and I used to love to play that when we were at the mall when, I, when we were dating and in college together. So I got one and it was pretty rough, you know, it had a, a lot of wear on the play field, a lot of dirt, filthy, and I just, you know, I said, well, I'm going to try and fix it up. So that's the way I've been with pinball all along is, is if, if, it, if it looked challenging to me, I accepted the challenge and moved on. I mean, I, I give it a shot. There was nothing I, I watch people paint, I watch people airbrush, I watch people, you know, clear coat, whatever. I, I, I always told myself, you know, I can do that too. I, I just need to learn how to do it. So I, I virtually taught myself everything I needed to know, along with online resources and things like that. So, you know, there's my finished play field after I clear coated it and all. See a lot of, a lot of painting work done there. And this is all with a paintbrush. None of that was an airbrush at all. Uh, matching colors and all. There's some really cool books about that. I love talking about this stuff. But, um, you know, it's not as simple as, as you might think. I went to the, the Hobby Lobby and bought my three colors of acrylic, and, and I thought, you know, the primary colors, you can do anything with it until you start mixing those together and you look like you got mud or, you know, something out of a baby diaper. So fast forward a few more years, get a little more confidence, a little more uh, happy to, to, to get new things, even if they're a little old and beat up. I got this poor old beat up out of order. You see the <laughs> thing out there? It spent most of its life in a 7-Eleven uh, space shuttle pinball machine out of Oklahoma City. Drove up and picked it up. $400. Yeah, sold. I'll take it. This thing was really rough. You know, the cabinet was, was, that was facing the, the, the sun got really bad. So, you know, what do you, what do you do to fix that? Well, you make your own stencils and you repaint the thing. So, I did that. The, the sides of the cabinet. Oh, this one was horrible. You could rub your hand down the side. Blue flakes would come off on your hands. It was horrible. Had to sand all that off, uh, fill all the little nooks and crannies and cracks in it, and make my own st stencils and, and repainted that. The coin door. This, someone had taken a, a, one of those things to lock the, across the coin door and had virtually ripped it out of the entire cabinet. There was a hole in the massive side in the hole. The pinball coin door was beat in. They had busted it in every way imaginable. So I, I redid that too and fixed all the holes and sanded everything, taped it and painted it. And, um, and of course I make mistakes. I took on all this beautiful paint. I, I put some polyurethane over the top of it and it all yellowed on me. So it still looks pretty good though. You know, um, the space shuttle inside, you know, it was kind of yellow and old. I took the original decals, I cleaned everything up. I t that's the original ship, and I, I repainted it. I took those decals and got all the gunk off the back and put some new adhesive on them and reattached them. We d you couldn't go, you know, there was no planetary pinball. There was no all these places where you could go and get remakes of everything. So you had to do it yourself. And I was up to the challenge. I, I thought, like I say, I can do that. That's not a problem. And I'll learn and I'll, I'll get better. When I started this space shuttle project, I, I can tell you that I, I did not think I had the skill to, to complete it, but I was going to give it my best shot. And turns out, you know, I learned a lot of, a lot of good uh, skills for, for later on in pinball restoration. Play field cleared off here, very rough, very rough. Um, when we cleaned it up even more, it got even rougher. But here's my, my final play field. This one, again, all paint brushes, no, no airbrushing yet. Some of my really bad problem areas, there's before and after. 
I learned how to paint circles. I never knew I could do that. Yeah, it's very tough, <laughs> let me tell you. And I learned how to paint letters. Those are very tough. There's the top lanes. I see a couple of, of, of uh, space shuttles out on the floor out there. One of them looks really nice. The other one looks a little more like mine did when I started. I learned to paint stars. Oh my gosh, those were tough. Yeah, and the letters around there and matching the colors and everything. So yeah, you know, when I, I later on I, I got into doing board repair. You know, I studied digital design and, and electrical engineering. That's my, my uh, field of study. And you come up with problems like these. And I mean, this, this is one rough board right here with battery acid leaking all over it. Bad, bad, bad thing. Um, so, I, I, well, I can, I can learn to fix a board. So I virtually sanded that thing down to the copper where the copper came off. I put some new wires of my own on there. I rewired and recreated all those, ran them to new sockets. You plug in the new chips and it worked the first time I tried it. So very, very cool. A flash machine, just one more here, a quick one for you. You get up to a point where th this kind of stuff doesn't even scare you anymore. I've always wanted a flash game, and a friend of mine, he, he found one for like $150 in a yard sale, but it was right before Christmas, and one of uh, his brothers was driving back from like Kansas all the way to El Paso, Texas, and so he loaded the flash machine in the back of his, his pickup truck. He didn't know you could take the head down. He didn't know you could take the legs off. He set it up with the head up at the back of the tailgate and drove it all the way across the state of Texas in a blizzard. And so this is what the back box should look like on a flash machine. This is what the one looked like when I got it. So <laughs> I just defrosted the freezer in my shop, and it did not have that much ice in it. And I told him, whatever you do, you know, and it, it was, after a couple of expletives, I, I, I won't lie to you, I did say, you know, and, the, and when he texted me the photo, I'm like, um, wow, or something equivalent to that. Anyway, I told him, whatever you do, do not power it up. Get a hairdryer, you know, don't, don't take an ice pick to that, please. You know, we, we can make this work. And this game, after drying out and sitting through a, you know, a dry southwest summer, we were able to fire it up and get it going. So uh, very cool, very cool kind of stuff, so. Just wanted to share a little bit, you know, you're, I know a lot of you guys look at me and you're like, who is that guy up there with Jack? Where'd he come from? Um, what, what, why does pinball mean so much to him? Well, it's just, it's just something that, that, that's passion in me. I, I enjoy it and I love being around, meeting all these people. I love all these guys that put on these shows that give all of us a chance to come together. So you see these guys in orange shirts out there, you know, walk up and say thank you very much for what you do because this is a lot of work to put on. Turn around, look over your shoulder at all the wiring and stuff back there that Mike has to put together and Chris. Man, if any one of those is in the wrong place, you know, you can't hear Jack Ranieri speak. And, and while that might not be a bad thing, um, just imagine all that stuff. He's, he's going to come up here and trip over a couple more things. So take a couple more questions if we've got time, if Mike's not waving at me yet. But thank you all. There's, there's more wire. Mike has more wire back there than a Ford Taurus, I think. A uh, couple of questions. We've got about two, three minutes if anybody's got a question. I knew you couldn't take that short leash. Yeah. That's too constraining. What do you have to do to get the cell phone part to work with the game? So, um, cell phone, you go up to the game. One of the games doesn't have this. I'm going to plug it in so this could communicate, right? So it's a little frustrating trying to communicate to the one. Download the Jersey Jack Pinball app. Just go over to the game. Depending on if you have an Android device, it's going to come up and say connected. If you have an Apple device, um, it's not going to say connected. But it'll, it'll get easier. Um, you hold down the left flipper on the game and the left flipper on the app, and you connect it to the... You're connected to it, all right? And a lot, a lot more things will be developed in that app, too, coming up. So that's just the beginning is hitting flippers. Uh, anybody got a question? Anybody else? Bill, do you want to come up and talk about anything? No? All right. What's next? Another game. Another game. That's an, and another game after that, and another game after that, yeah. Yes. <laughs> all right, so... Oh. <laughs> Uh, danger, Will Robinson. Okay, so um, you remember the conversation we had uh, about the Hobbit when I told you, Jesse Jack, you are the future of pinball. 
You didn't have to take that literally, man. It's like dial in, it's like the future over there. The only question that I have is when the machines start taking pictures of you, can it make you cuter? Because I see a lot of dudes like playing over there and they're like always looking down like, and then they start smiling mysteriously. That's, that's a strange feature, man. Why is there? I don't know. Uh, I have a friend of mine that's a photographer. He says the camera doesn't lie. So he takes pictures of me. I don't like him. He says the camera doesn't lie. I'm trying to get a great artist to do a caricature of me so I don't have to look at a picture of me. One day when he has time, John Yowsey will actually make that happen. So that's okay. He could have done that in the airport yesterday. I know. He's doodle, doodling, doodling around. Anybody else? Listen, everybody, thank you. It's really wonderful to see all of you. Uh, I'm, I'm disappointed I don't get to see more of you more than only one time a year. Some of you that have nothing to do, and I won't mention your name, uh, whatever, uh, you go to a lot of shows. I get to see you a lot of places around the country, and it's real fun. Keep, uh, keep playing pinball. Keep positive, okay? Tell people positive things about pinball. Don't be negative. I can never be negative. My blood type is be positive. So really it is. You know, when I donate blood, it's be positive. So I can't be negative. You can never start a pinball company and be negative. And really, if you can't have fun here with all these people playing pinball, you know, maybe you should go out that window. You know? And that's it. All right, everybody, God bless everybody. Thank you. Steve Ritchie is coming next. I see, I see my friend Steve Ritchie, the king. Hello, Steve. Yeah, play better. Play better. Design better. <laughs> okay. Shoot here and here. <laughs>